Hello everyone. So today I'll be explaining the brachial plexus and I'll also draw an illustration so that it's easier to understand and produce during an exam. So two things that we need to keep in mind uh, about the brachial plexus is that one, it's between the anterior and middle scalene muscle and two, it emerges from the anterior rami of C5 to T1. Now let's start with the brachial plexus. This is the C5 vertebra, C6 vertebra, C7 vertebra and T1 vertebra. So there are various parts to the brachial plexus which are like the parts of a tree. There are roots, then there are trunks, then there are divisions, there are cords and finally there are terminal branches. So let's start with the roots. So we have the C5 root that comes from above the C5 vertebra. We have the C6 root that emerges above the C6 vertebra. We have the C7 root that emerges above the C7 vertebra. Then we have the C8 and a T1 root. Although we don't have a C8 vertebra, we have a C8 root which comes from above the T1 vertebra. And finally, we have the T1 root which emerges below the T1 vertebra. So this is where there is a slight change. Now let's move on to the trunks. So the C5 and C6 merge together to form the superior trunk. C7 is a loner that forms the middle trunk all by itself. C8 and T1 merge together to form the inferior trunk. So C5 and C6 form the superior trunk. We have C7 as a loner forming the middle trunk. Then we have C8 and T1 combining to form the inferior trunk. Now let's continue with divisions. So for divisions, every trunk that is the superior, middle and inferior trunk will give out two divisions. One is the anterior division and one is the posterior division. So here we have superior trunk giving out its division. The middle trunk giving out its direct division. And finally the inferior trunk giving out its division. One division of the inferior trunk will meet a division of the middle trunk. Similarly one division of the superior trunk will also meet with one division of the middle trunk. And finally, we have one of the middle divisions meeting one of the divisions of the superior trunk. Now, how do we identify which division is anterior and which division is posterior? So a simple trick to de determine the anterior and posterior divisions. Everything that merges at this point. So this intersection is basically a posterior intersection. That means everything merging at this point will be a posterior division. So this is the posterior division of the superior trunk. This is the posterior division of the inferior trunk. And this is the posterior division of the middle trunk and the rest that is which I'm going to highlight with yellow these are the anterior divisions so the ones highlighted in yellow are the anterior divisions and the one that meets here this intersection is the posterior division so let's just name them this is the posterior division of the superior trunk this is the posterior division of the middle trunk and this is, this is the posterior division of the inferior trunk. This is the anterior division of the superior trunk. This is the anterior division of the middle trunk. And this is the anterior division of the inferior trunk. Now moving on to the cords. So while naming the cords, Let's imagine a hand over here. 
okay this this is the axillary region and this is the shoulder region all right so it's understood that this is the lateral part of the arm this is the medial part of the arm so when we see the brachial plexus moving down this will go through the lateral part of the arm this will move on through the medial part of the arm and rightly so we name them since it since this part moves through the lateral part of the arm this will be the lateral cord this will move through the medial part of the arm and therefore the medial cord and the one in the center is formed by the intersection of all the posterior divisions and is hence known as the posterior cord Now we are done with the roots, the trunks, the divisions, and the cords. Now we come to the terminal branches. So for the terminal branches, in order to memorize the roots, we just need to learn this illustration and need to draw it. If you draw it just once or twice, you will get the hang of the roots, the origin roots of each of the terminal branches. So let's start. with the terminal branch of the lateral cord so we have c5 contributing to the terminal branch c6 contributing and we have a c7 contribution this is the musculo cutaneous nerve that's all that we have as a terminal branch from the lateral cord now let's move to the posterior cord posterior cord is a cord that gives rise to two nerves so let's look at the first nerve which arises from c5 and c6 this is the axillary nerve so the axillary nerve although it arises from the posterior cord it has no intervention from c7 it's only from c5 and c6 the next terminal branch from the posterior cord is the radial nerve coming from c5 c6 c7 C eight and finally T one. So since it has contributions from each and every root that is associated with the brachial plexus, hence it is the largest nerve of the brachial plexus. that's all that we have from the posterior cord now moving to the medial cord medial cord has its terminal branches from c8 and t1 forming the ulnar nerve and we finally have the medial nerve which comes from c6 emerging here c7 goes up and emerges here c8 emerging here and t1 emerging here to form the median nerve now if we are given the diagram of the brachial plexus we need to identify this m so this section would be the median nerve Now that we're done with the terminal branches, there are various other branches that come out from a different regions of the brachial plexus. Let's look at them. So we have three regions from which we have various other branches emerging, which are the roots, the trunks, and the cords. So let's look at the branches from the root. We have one from C five. 
which is the dorsal scapular nerve and we have one which comes from c5 c6 and c7 known as the long thoracic nerve that's all that we have from the roots so we have the dorsal scapular nerve solely from c5 and we have the long thoracic nerve from c5 c6 and c7 then we have the superior trunk that gives rise to two other branches one at the top one at the bottom so the one at the top will be supra since it it is at the top so it is supra scapular and the other one is at the bottom therefore it will be sub supra since it's at the top and we have sub since it's at the bottom sub clavian nerve that's all that was coming out of the trunks now we have the cords so the cords we have the lateral posterior and the medial cord that gives rise to branches but since the superior section which is this section has given rise to so many branches hence the lateral cord will give rise to just one branch and since the middle and the inferior and these sections have not given rise to many branches hence they'll compensate everything over here in the cord section posterior will give rise to 3 and the medial will give rise to 3 so now the lateral cord which gives rise to 1 is the lateral pectoral nerve and its partner is coming from the medial cord which is the medial pectoral nerve then we have the posterior cord which gives rise to 3 which is the upper sub scapular nerve middle sub scapular nerve the middle subscapular nerve is also known as the thoraco dorsal nerve thoraco dorsal nerve then we have the lower subscapular nerve now coming to the medial cord the first one was already the medial pectoral nerve along with the lateral pectoral nerve here the next two the medial brachial nerve brachial meaning the arm region and therefore it supplies the arm and the medial antibrachial nerve antibrachial meaning in front of the brachial region which means it supplies the forearm so that's all the brachial plexus comprises of a quick way to draw this would be just drawing it in the stick form so just draw c5 c6 c7 t1 c5 root c6 root c7 root c8 root t1 root they all form the trunks then there's a division so just draw a cross on top and a line joining this part here these were the divisions then we have the cords 
and finally there will be the terminal branches this is the superior this is the middle this is the inferior trunk this we'll imagine the hand so this will go lateral and this will be medial and this is formed by the intersection of all the posterior branches therefore this is the posterior cord now we'll draw the terminal branches so we have the musculocutaneous nerve arising from c5 c6 c7 musculocutaneous nerve then we'll have the axillary nerve arising from c5 and c6 Now we have the radial nerve arising from C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, radial nerve. After which we talk about the ulna nerve arising from C8 and T1. Finally we talk about the medial nerve which comes from C6. C7, C8, T1. Characteristic feature over here is the M shape helping us identify the medial nerve. Once we are done with the medial nerve, now we talk about the other branches. We have one here, dorsal scapular nerve, one here long thoracic nerve then from the trunks we have two from the superior trunk one is on top the other one is at the bottom since it's on the top this is supra scapular nerve this is the bottom therefore the sub subclavian nerve since we've had so many from the top we'll have just one from the lateral part three from the posterior and three from the medial lateral will give rise to lateral pectoral nerve medial will give rise to medial pectoral nerve then we have three in the posterior region this is the upper subscapular nerve the middle subscapular nerve and the lower subscapular nerve the middle subscapular nerve is also known as thoracodorsal nerve then here we have the middle brachial nerve supplying the arm and then the middle antibrachial nerve supplying the forearm so this is just a simplified diagram that can be drawn to tackle any question during an examination that's all for today thank you